New Hill Harris X poll found 45% of voters approve of President Biden, while 50% disapprove. 5% are unsure. This comes in slightly higher than the Real Clear Politics average, which has Biden's approval at 42.9% and a 50.2% disapproval. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's not, he's not doing too well. Um, Interesting uptick, though. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of an uptick. Um, kind of wonder why that is. Over the last couple of weeks. Maybe it's because he hasn't done anything. Like, he hasn't really, and he hasn't done anything. You know, he's kind of stayed out of it a little bit. I feel like I haven't heard much from Joe Biden over the last couple of weeks. That is so actually his secret weapon. His ability to just <laughs> do nothing, fade into the background, you know, hang out in the basement. And, and that helps him a lot. You know, we, we like our Biden neither seen nor heard. <laughs> well, Maybe Af that's the secret. Yeah, yeah. Af Afghanistan is failing. Rear view mirror. We rear view mirror uh, to Afghanistan. The, the Virginia, I think losing in Virginia was, both, was a, a function of his low approval rating, uh, but also contributed to the low approval rating further because people don't like losers. So losing Virginia is also uh, fading a bit into the into the background and, and without I think without negative news what we're going to see for the rest of our lives is a reversion to the mean of Democrats on one side and Democratic leaning independents on one side and then Republicans and Republican leaners on the other side so without bad news I think that that's where people sort when you get bad news people will move slightly one way or the other and then the closer you get to an election the more people will sort again can you remember george bush being at like 90 percent approval oh, yeah. rating and then yeah, still you know still like 70 percent approval rating for a, like a long time like that would never happen i was in that 10 percent you were in the, you were in the 10 percent <laughs> uh, but yes i do i do remember that you could not say a word about that man i know yeah We'll never yeah. have that again. I don't matter how many 9-11s no. could take place no. simultaneously, you would still not have. Oh, no. That, uh, if In our current environment, uh, a 9-11 style event, by the next day, the parties would be pointing fingers at each right. other. I mean, in a way, COVID was a 9-11 site. It was no, not, no one uh, was responsible for it that we know of in the way that 9-11 <laughs> was. But it, it killed far more people, crippled our country in actually in much worse, actually, than a terrorist right. attack. Right. More people this week will die of COVID. That's right. Yeah. Than in, on 9-11. Yeah. Well. CNN is floating uh, possible uh, 2024 Democratic replacements. The network's editor-at-large, Chris Saliza, don't ever want to miss a column by Chris Saliza, named 11 possible contenders, including 2020 candidates such as now Vice President Kamala Harris, thanks, Chris, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and Senators Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar, and other Democrats such as Stacey Abrams, Gretchen Whitner, Whitmer, Gina Raimondo, Mitch Landrieu, uh, Roy Cooper, uh, Phil Murphy, and J.B. Pritzker. Any of those mm. jump out at you as uh, plausible, Kim? Oh, gosh. You know, no. I, I, I would think that maybe the Democrats would maybe want to try to try to get, get uh, Gretchen Whitmer in there, would be my guess, only because... You know, they see that Kamala is not really doing very well. Pete Buttigieg, I don't know. You know, I'd say it might be a battle between him and Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, I'm not a fan of, of any of them particularly. But, you know, what we're seeing with Joe Biden's approval rating, if it is kind of staying a little steady or kind of going a little bit up, from him kind of being in the background, that might actually be an incentive for Democrats to say, maybe we need to replace the guy. Yeah, they're they're never going to replace him in 2024. I'm I'm, a, not, I'm, I'm on the record not saying that it's there's no po he would have to be he's more popular than all of these people, and right. it would be so hard to do it. it it's he will be the I, unless he unless he dies he will, or or decides to retire wood, and it makes Bobby. no sense for him to retire. Like if he wants to retire, he, he should he be elected president and right. then and then retire because he's the best hope they have. Uh, but in 2028, that then it will be interesting, and and you know we'll see the bench is pretty is not great for the Democrats. There will be some, I mean, for you know forecasting it from now, there will be some knockdown, drag out. Is that how we say that phrase? Yep. Fight. You nailed it. Thank you. Between uh, Kamala <laughs> and Pete is what I would expect. Uh, with you know, Michelle uh -oh. Obama is the <laughs> Ryan is grim. <laughs> Poor Ryan. Ryan Grimm is grimacing. Um, <laughs> if Michelle Obama were to get in there, that would be probably the only potential the wrinkle. Only one. No but. one, Kamala Harris, no one is going to have a real knockdown, drag out. Did I, I now I said it wrong. Fight no, with Kamala Harris. <laughs> we're, we're you got it, too. You both nailed it. <laughs>
I mean, she she's just so unpopular. Anyone can defeat her, unfortunately, yeah. for her. And that's the way it was in the primary, and that's the way it still is. Nothing has changed But the that. party's going to love her because she checks all the right— I mean, they're not going to love her. They're going to— Tolerate her in like a Hillary Clinton sort of way, and you're gonna have a rather... you're gonna have a long, drawn out fight, the, you know, akin to the the 2008 fight, probably between uh, They'd between. They'd rather have Stacey Abrams. That's who they would put in to check the same well, boxes as Kamala. Who's they? The the party, or the, the the voters. I agree yeah. with you, but they don't. They only have so much no, power. I think he... They, the establishment, I think the they. establishment Democrat will, uh, that the party will actually say, Kamala, maybe it's time to go off into the sunset and um, I don't know. Be on the uh, Supreme Court. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll try to get you on the Supreme yeah, Court. J.B. Pritzker could be the, the, the sleeper in there, this like gaff prone, uh, beef eating billionaire uh, who just <laughs> has this like weird kind of populist connection with, with people, uh, governed much more progressively, I think, than people expected, but super popular in, in Illinois and mm. like connects with people in a, in, in a way that you wouldn't expect from a Pritzker billionaire. Um, you know, so I wouldn't completely uh, rule him out, though this is, though there would have to be some, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, Someone with no, you need name recognition to stand out. And being, having just someone who's a governor, unless you've been in the news constantly, like Ron DeSantis is now a name right. everybody knows, um, is, is gonna, right, we didn't know who Pete Buttigieg was when it started, but he got a lot of attention, he did pretty well, surprisingly well in the primaries, now he's got a yeah. national position platform, the same is true of Kamala Harris to some degree. So now they're just like on the next level of of attention, which is such a which is huge advantage. Every said falsely and wrongly that well, Biden, you know, Biden's not energetic. Who actually likes him? It turns out well, everybody knows who he is, and that was a tremendous advantage because he was the vice president. Yeah. Well, AOC so. will be old enough by then if we're talking to uh, if we're talking uh, you know after this next election, AOC would be. Uh, so actually, maybe. she would be eligible maybe. for th this one. This, I don't know if she's eligible for this yeah. next one because she's only 30. She's 32 right now. Right. She, yeah, she would turn well, 35 I guess just she, before. Yeah, okay. So she would in, be, but I, but, I don't know. see that. I certainly don't see that. She's happening. too committed. She's fairly committed to like being a good Congress. But I mean, I, like, I disagree with her, but she doesn't want to like blow up right. her. I don't, I don't see know. that. Not that. Not. I don't not see this that time. this cycle. Yeah. One day. Probably. Not this cycle, but I, I would say maybe in 2028. I could see her possibly throwing her hat in the ring. Hmm. Maybe she can uh, run against uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Can run. We can just have a showdown of, uh, of uh, extreme. I I Ilan Omar and uh, Lauren Boebert can run or whatever. The I really hope our country does not devolve politically to that point, Robbie. <laughs> Again, oh, knock on wood. We can Bo go Bo much Bo lower. The GOP nominee, yeah. Much, much lower than this. Well, knock we're on our way there. <laughs> and we'll have more rising right after this.